Hey there, Dave Schmidow. Uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about standards-based grading. Now, I get the opportunity to work with schools all over North America as they transition into standards-based grading. So let me just unpack it a little bit so we can all have some common understanding of the process and what's really being asked of us. So a, a Schmidowism, something that Dave Schmidow, me, something that I say all the time. A standard is only standard if it's standard. I say that, but yet I also follow it up with, but yet there's no standard way to do standards-based grading. Because when we start talking about standards-based grading, there are really two things that we're talking about. The first is an understanding of the standards. The standards that are sent to us by our given state, our commonwealth, our territory. The standards that drive our curriculum and our resources. The standards are supposed to be aligned to our instruction and ultimately aligned to our assessments. Then there are also the underlining standard operating procedures. The standard ways that we do business within our system, within our schools, within our district or division. The SOPs or the standard operating procedures or processes that we might have include things like how our report cards look. They include things like how many assignments do we need to include. They include things like do we use percentages or points. They include things like retakes and redos. They include how we communicate and how we provide feedback. And there are no standard practices. There are no standardized best practices for those. Now, I do a lot of work with schools, and typically I am called in once schools have already made a commitment to embrace a standards-based grading mindset. And to be completely honest, the, the trigger point for a lot of schools, the thing that makes a lot of schools want to explore this are things like we simply need to change our report card because we recognize the ABCDF mindset doesn't necessarily give parents or stakeholders accurate and clear communication about students' next steps or their actual progress towards mastery, which is a great mindset to have. But starting with report card is not necessarily something I would advise. That tends to be a byproduct of all the amazing work. I also get called in because people have started to explore the ideas of retakes and redos, which is also a good thing to explore, but it is not the work that needs to be unpacked. See, when you start talking standards-based grading, ultimately what happens is Pandora's box gets opened up and a lot of ideas starts swirling around. You start to have conversations about the standards, the standards that are given to us by the state. And we start to recognize that typically within schools and districts, we lack fidelity in even understanding and interpreting what the standards mean, let alone within our districts or our schools or our grade levels. K-12, looking for that vertical and horizontal alignment and understanding of standards is a work in and of itself. Let me give you another little statistic just to help you outline this and understand this. In a typical school in the United States, there are on average 256 core academic standards for a sixth grader to master. When I say core academic standards, I'm talking about standards in language arts, science, social studies, and math in the four core areas, 256. In a typical school year of 180 days, that equates to us having the expectation that students will master a standard every 0.7 days, which is an impossible feat. You throw in some of the electives and is mentioning the, the three most popular electives of PE, music, and art in most states, that number swells to 1,430 standards in an academic year. Now, if you're with me, you understand that that is an impossible feat. No student, let alone no human being, is going to be able to master anything in 0.7 days. So another underlying truth and another underlying principle that has to be uncovered through standards-based grading is the work on priority standards, power standards, essential standards, whatever districts call them and trying to walk away with a common understanding of how do we select those without it just getting into an arm wrestling match that we're all just picking and choosing our favorite topics, our favorite units, but actually focusing in on the standards that matter most, focusing in on leverage, endurance, and depth so that, we, again, we have vertical and horizontal alignment. We also have conversations about how to give feedback to students because feedback is what drives imp improvement. We understand that assessment is not summative or formative, but that assessment should be used summatively and formatively. So we unpack how to make sure our assessments or our collection of student evidence is aligned towards standards and that we're giving feedback in a standardized way and a standardized method so that all of our stakeholders can understand how we all do it. Because if we have pockets of, of feedback loops that are different than, than others, then there's going to be inconsistencies that are going to lead to gaps in communication. 
Ultimately, it all does trickle downhill after we follow a 10-step roadmap, which I am happy to send you. We get to the point where we start looking at report cards. How does all of this manifest itself into some sort of document where we're able to accurately, with fidelity, and with assurances, provide an accurate accountability uh, matrix of student progress, recognizing growth and achievement and mastery towards essential standards with the elimination of arbitrary deadlines, arbitrary hoops for kids to jump through. How does it all work? Well, this is the work of standards-based grading. It's not something that's typically done in a 90-minute little workshop. It's typically work that, it can cover, that uncovers a lot of our pedagogical uh, of practices. We have to deconstruct in order to reconstruct. So if you're into examining literally everything that you do, and affirming the greatness that is already taking place in your classroom, building around that and chiseling away some of the rough edges so that we can reduce reduce the, the, the extra work and the extra burden to allow our jobs and our lives to be more efficient while also capitalizing on ways to make students' lives and student achievement more effective. SBG might be the way to go. So reach out, let me know. If you're into this and you want to make a, a commitment to, to get better, I am happy to help. Let's go.